Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh on Monday, February 26, 2018, and I am here in beautiful Panama Beach, Florida, in the rain at a camping world getting some work done on No Force One. And as you probably know, I am running for the Libertarian Party nomination for president in order to dissolve the entire federal government of the United States of America in a peaceful, orderly manner, leaving us with 50 independent states, territories, and sovereign native nations. And, and as you can imagine, running on such a platform is going to invoke some resistance. And it's really sad to see that that resistance is coming from within the Libertarian Party, but given the government's efforts in the past to infiltrate movements that challenge its power, it's no surprise that we know uh, the Libertarian Party, just like most activist organizations in the United States that are fundamentally challenging government power, there is, uh, well, what we can see at least is a lot of corruption, whether it's infiltration or not. We might not know for, you know, five to ten years until the records come out, until we're able to release all the records after we win and take office in 21 and start the process of dismantling the federal government. But uh, whether the people involved here are, are plants or, or compromised or not really is irrelevant because we know that there is corruption within the Libertarian Party, even though it is the party of principle, or rather because the Libertarian Party is the party of principle, there is need to infiltrate it if you want to shut it down, if you want to render it ineffective, if you want it to keep nominating for president washed up Republican candidates who never offer the American people a real alternative. So what we're trying to do with this campaign is make, well, obviously, we're turning the American presidential election into a referendum on whether or not the federal government should be allowed to continue to exist at all. For the first time in American history, Americans are going to have a real choice in their vote. So in my home state of Arizona last month, we had an awesome state convention. We had more people show up to a state convention than ever before in state party history. And we had, for the first time in state party history, uh, in, in an off cycle year, we had a competitive delegate selection process. We ended up with 26 people requesting 23 delegate slots. And as per the party rules, there were requirements that the uh, that those people who who um, are submitting their names is requesting to be delegates with the Libertarian Party of Arizona to the national convention uh, submitted their names on a first come first serve basis and that was going to be how they determined who got those slots whoever was first in line who met the requirements and we have a very important agenda for the convention in 2018 and I kind of naively assumed that we were going to be able to just bring in people, lobby for what we want, and, and get a fair straight up and down vote, but apparently that's not the case. Now, I wonder what it is that people are so threatened by, but I can kind of tell you, first of all, with our agenda, we want to make localization part of the platform. There's nothing more unlibertarian and anti-freedom you can say than, I want to be president of the United States. I want to be in charge of this giant violent monopoly. No, of course not. So we want to make part of the party platform specifically that we support the localization of government, that we want power pushed down to you and your communities rather than put into one centralized, one-size-fits-all solution. So that's the first one, to, to make that one-sentence addition to the national party platform, which is really good already. And then two, based on that, to put out a unity statement to the American public in not so many words saying, hey, we're not a debate club anymore. We're ready to be a political force. And if you want to see government moved in the direction of your freedom, in the direction of your community, doesn't matter if you're a liberal or conservative. Those are aesthetic preferences. We're concerned about the ethics. And obviously, forcing people into a government system is unethical. If it's voluntary and by the consent of the governed, only then is it truly an ethical system of government. So we want to do a unity statement to bring people into the party to make it more inclusive. And now, now who would be opposed to these things, right? Well, there's one other part of this. Uh, we want to introduce a blockchain-based voting system. And blockchain technology, that's right, the stuff that's behind cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is an amazing thing that is fundamentally changing the world already. But there's a way to implement this in a voting system with the National Party of, of the Libertarian Party where every single member can have a vote on a transparent system with full accountability through the blockchain. So we can have national referenda, not just have the Libertarian National Committee Board of Directors 
electors have them be this you know elite group that determines the direction of the party and of course yeah we're getting some resistance to that but one of the most obvious points of resistance is the current chair Nick Sarwark and actually at the Arizona State Convention he is a resident of Arizona and uh, he's running in a nonpartisan race race for for mayor which is really disappointing that you know we've given him this uh, this title of uh, you know national chair and instead of using it to, to spread the message of the party he's running in a, in a nonpartisan race and as you can hear there's uh, there's some work being done on the RV right now so pardon the interruption but the corruption in the, uh, the national leadership of the Libertarian Party is something that uh, people have been worried about and working on uh, for many years. And it's really about time that we have a Libertarian takeover of the Libertarian Party, that we have a grassroots takeover of the Libertarian Party. That's what I'm organizing with this campaign right now. With my great team, we are bringing people into the party, especially with our political team, Angela Fisher-Owens and Ben Farmer. They're doing a great job organizing delegates all over the country. And it's just really sad that when we, when we, when we do well, we bring more people into the party, the corrupt existing party leadership is trying to shut them out. And in Arizona, they've, they've disqualified a number of, of our delegates. And they're not even our delegates. We, you know, I, I don't like these possessive terms. We don't own these people. These are just people who care about my message, who care about freedom, who want to come into the party and want to be active. And they are being shut out. And they're being shut out in secret. So we submitted our names at the uh, at the state convention and we have this on video being the first ones there we have the video of them saying what the criteria were we have the video uh, of the the cards that had our names on them being turned in and so now they're saying that oh we're gonna we're changing our procedure we're not gonna even publish the list of the names of delegates so we don't even know who's been qualified and who isn't but i got an email they had a hard time disqualifying me because if they did they knew there would be hell to pay but there's going to be hell to pay anyway because i care more about people who are you know coming into this and new and are trying to support what we're doing than i do about myself even so what they did was really shady and i got an email saying welcome you're a delegate congratulations but we had a number of other party officers in Yavapai County where I'm the chair who didn't even get emails saying that they were welcome uh, or that they were uh, acknowledged as delegates, which is really just a, a, a sad and pathetic thing. But what's worse uh, is it's actually illegal. Now, I guess you might say, well, who cares if it's illegal or not? But this is one place where in, in Arizona, the way the delegate selection process works is determined by state laws that regulate how third par how any party can be formed. Of course, this is one of the ways that the old parties uh, try to keep third parties from being an effective challenge already. We're clearing those hurdles, and now we have to clear the hurdle that the corrupt party leadership is using uh, through that authority to, stay, to stand in the way uh, of people who want to be delegates, who want to participate in the political process who want to be part of the Libertarian Party. And it was Nick Sarwark at the convention. By the way, there was a, there was a resolution uh, condemning pedophilia. And he actually stood up and opposed that as well, which is really just a, a sick, sad sign uh, of where his sentiments lay. But when we submitted our delegates, he actually tried to stand up and oppose it and say, isn't this out of order? And he was actually laughed down. So what does he do instead? You know, he does, and, and I don't know what his direct involvement with is in this part of it, but what does the corrupt, what, what do the corrupt people do? They then go behind the scenes and in secret, try to disqualify our delegates. Well, they did essentially disqualify our delegates, but they did so illegally. And now, who am I talking about here? And this is this is the sad thing about this, is that the people who are doing this evil uh, are so inept and pathetic about it that they're not even good about, you know, hiding their, their, their true intentions. Maybe it's just that they haven't talked to me. They think I'm dumb. They think people don't care about me. But no, I have eyes and ears everywhere. And so when they talk about this stuff with other people, and it's, I don't know how much is in public, but in messages that they've sent to other people, I've got screenshots of them saying, oh, I can't wait till we see the look on Adam's face when he sees the list of delegates. Well, they haven't even published the list of delegates. They're doing that in secret. So I'm going to call out a couple people here because these are the ones who are untrustworthy. These are the ones who cannot be trusted in positions of leadership within the Libertarian Party. And we are going to make sure in Arizona that we do our job going into 2019 and that they no longer have positions of leadership or any authority within the Libertarian Party. Brandon Slayton is one who has come out and specifically stood against our delegates. Another one, Kevin McCormick. Now, Kevin thinks he's slick. He's kind of nice to my face and then pulls 
this crap behind my back. It's really sad, Kevin. You should know better. And it's funny to think that you're running against me for the presidential nomination and you can't even muster uh, basic integrity in your conduct as an officer as, as in the Libertarian Party of Arizona. It's pathetic. Um, Howard Blitz is the chair, and, and I don't know about his direct involvement, but ultimately is the chair of the Libertarian Party of Arizona. He's responsible. And, you know, we haven't really gotten any kind of adequate response from him on clearing this up, on making it an honest process. So it's really sad. Um, but yeah, th th these are people doing evil in the open. And, and one of our delegates there who is absolutely qualified is Liam Fisher. He's nine years old. And what they're saying is, we only like children when we can diddle them in the corner. But when they want to actually stand up and have a voice in politics, we're going to work to keep them out. And that, that's just really sad to see that, you know, that, that people... People like Daniel Hayes, who's, who's also come out against, uh, you know, th th this uh, th th this effort to bring people into the party, uh, call, calling it a stunt. Yeah, bringing people into the party is a stunt, Daniel. I mean, come on. You're going to keep a nine-year-old out who wants to be a part of the process, who's following the rules and showing up to meetings, and you're going to disqualify him from being a delegate in secret. That is just sick and sad on so many levels. So... Unfortunately, this means that we have to change our strategy. And this last weekend, we had a good presence. Uh, Angela and Ethan uh, uh, were at the convention in Missouri and uh, had, a, had a great time there and did a great job getting our delegates mustered and in the process there and figuring out what's going on. I was in Florida this past weekend, and for the first time in an off-convention year, we had a competitive delegate process for the Libertarian Party of Florida. It was awesome. But we did have to do this somewhat covert strategy where uh, if you're going in, we used to we used to say we're going to identify like in Arizona, we all sat together, we put in our names together, we're all wearing freedom uh, lapel pins, the freedom logo, and we're not going to be able to do that anymore. And this is, this, is, this is really unfortunate, but there's enough corruption in the LP that from now on, if you're going to be a delegate to support our agenda at the National Convention, go dark. You're going to have to go, not dark, but you're going to have to go covert, rather. You're going to have to go into these conventions uh, without telling people, you know, why you're there. You're just going to have to go in and say, I'm just, I'm just participating. I just want to be, um, you know, I, I want to be a delegate to the National Convention. I'm here to participate. What do I have to do to qualify and sign up? And I, I know this sounds like a little bit extreme, but uh, I'm going to be at as many conventions as possible. If you If you see me and you're concerned about this, don't even say hi to me. You know, don't don't come up and shake my hand. I'm not going to have my feelings hurt. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be a presence at the convention. I'm going to be talking to everybody. But if you're concerned that, that you're going to get shut out of the delegate process because you're affiliated with the Kokesh campaign, avoid me. Ignore me. Um, I, you know, I'll have assistance there. I'm going to have uh, Elijah Gizzarelli at, at most of the conventions, uh, or at least a lot of them coming up, and Aaron Askew. I think Aaron's going to be at more than Elijah at this point, right? Elijah, Elijah's sitting right here, yeah. So, But Elijah or Aaron will be with me at all the state conventions. You can go talk to them and pass messages to me if you need to this way. But, it, you know, and, and it's really sad because we see that, that some of these people, again, will be nice to my face. Um, I guess they don't want to get called out publicly. They don't want to, they don't want to cross me. But then they're going to, you know, try to stab me in the back. So, you know, just because someone says they're a Kokesh supporter, even then doesn't mean that you can trust them. So if you have questions about that, and I know this is getting really into the weeds on the, on the politics on a state by state level, but, you know, if you have questions, we're going to be hosting uh, some side events at some of these conventions. So if you want to come out and meet me, you know, in a, in a, at a venue that's just a little bit separate from the actual convention meeting, you can come and talk to me then. Talk to me about, you know, who, who's trustworthy uh, you know who we know at, at each state is uh, can 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 operate with integrity and, and and live up to the standard of the party of principle but this is exactly why it's so important to be able to do this now um, you know we have we have called on the national leadership to address some of this uh, or be exposed as corrupt and they're not responsive and this is why it's all the more important that we replace the corrupt elements of the national leadership at the LNC and or at the uh, at the national convention in 2018 and as for Arizona because they have so blatantly violated the law we are going to be pursuing legal action against them right after uh, 
after I record this video, actually, we're, we've got a conference call uh, with some attorneys and we're going to be exploring our options. But we're not going to roll over for this. We're not just going to let them shut out our delegates, even in Arizona, uh, a, a, you know, a relatively small state with 23 delegates out of over a thousand at the National Convention. We're going to fight for every single delegate slot. And this is why we have to do this in 2018 to set ourselves up for 2020. Because if we didn't do this kind of organizing, we wouldn't be facing a fair fight going into 2020. So I hope you guys see that this is part of the long-term strategy and this is very important for being able to get this message in front of the American people credibly as the nominee of the Libertarian Party. So I hope you'll help join us in this effort and see that this is a long-term goal. And even if you, you know, I, I it's not like being a delegate in the Republican Party. You know, it is still really, really easy to be a uh, to be a delegate within the LP. You show up at a state meeting and raise your hand and maybe fill out a form or two to be a member uh, of the national party or the state party or to be a registered voter in that state. Whatever little hoop like that they want to make you jump through. But um, you know, this is one of the things that I've noticed in uh, pulling on some of these threads and seeing some things unravel and like I said in, in some of my earlier videos addressing this it's become kind of a me too moment for the Libertarian Party I'm not trying to endorse the me too movement no but the, the very the core concept of standing up to bullies like Daniel Hayes like Nick Sarwark is that you know they, they you have to recognize people who are bullies depend on being able to bully you into silence and to think that you're all alone, to think that you're the only victim. But when enough people stand up and say, me too, you know, I've had that experience too. Yeah, I've seen that corruption and I've dealt with that. So it's really important that we have these conversations. And I got to say, little shout out here to Mark Golub at the uh, Florida State Convention who, who had uh, a, a very dramatic presentation as the fundraiser for LPF, calling out some people just on little stuff, just for not being responsive. You know, we need that kind of stuff. We need to change the party culture so it's not avoidant of conflict or, or trying to be politically correct or polite because that's exactly what makes us vulnerable to this kind of bullying and manipulation and corruption. And what, what I've noticed, again, from pulling all these threads is that, you know, you might think, there, there's only millions of dollars at stake, or a few $10 million when we're talking about the Libertarian Party. But I'm so confident in the message of, of libertarianism that if, if we got this in front of the American people in any form, mine or, or, or anybody else who represents the non-aggression principle properly, uh, it's game over for government. It's not tens of millions of dollars at stake. It's trillions and trillions of dollars at stake. It's the whole thing. The whole dang house of cards is... Just that ready to be blown over. And the kind of people who are behind this, it's not, it's not all these you know, petty bureaucrats and local party officials. No, no. This corruption goes to the highest levels of what you would expect being relevant in the Libertarian Party. And as you know, the vice presidential nominee in the last year's uh, election in 2016, excuse me, last cycle's election, was former Governor Bill Weld. And what a lot of people don't know is that he's also a former Department of Justice attorney who's got connections to a lot of the most evil elements of government. Now, about my arrest, and if you didn't know this, when I announced on January 16th with an email and a press release, I was arrested, pulled over twice, and, and taken away for 10 days within an hour. And it was that same weekend that Bill Weld was trying to do the soft launch of his campaign with a documentary at around Sundance. He, the Sundance Film Festival had to send them uh, effectively a cease and desist letter say, stop using our branding, you're not even part of Sundance. It was really pathetic. A documentary produced by a known pedophile and serial harasser. And, you know, I, I don't want to play guilt by associations here with Bill Weld. But, Bill, if you're trying to be a serious representative of the Libertarian Party, no, we don't need more pedophiles and pedophile sympathizers in the party. Absolutely not. No, you need to keep that stuff away from freedom. Because, no, it is, it, it is absolutely contradictory to what we stand for. When you advocate for the rights of all human beings, that includes advocating for the rights of children, not advocating for those who abuse them. So, no, Bill Weld, you do not have a place in the Libertarian Party. And if I have to do this work three years in advance to make this happen, you bet your butt I'm going to put in the work every single day to make sure that Bill Weld is not the nominee of the party in 2020. In fact, to make sure that he has nothing to do with the LP 
ever again. And you can see right now, just even this last week, he released a video about uh, some new project that he's launching to, to raise his national profile. And it's one of these silly things like, I'm getting ready to run for president, but I'm not ready to tell anybody. I'm just, and you know what, Bill? I hope you never announce. I hope you get so shut out of this process and called out for the corruption that you are, or the corrupt politician that you are, or, you know, even more likely or more, more beneficial. I hope that, that some of this leads you to, to have a little examination of conscience. Ultimately, that's what this is about. Uh, I don't have anything uh, against uh, even you, Mr. Weld, uh, personally. Just what you represent politically. For you personally, I hope you wake up. You've been around enough ethical people and libertarians. Some of that should have rubbed off by now. You should, be stop, you should stop advocating for militarism and central control and all the sick things that you're trying to pass off as libertarianism. No, you know that those things are unethical at this point. You must have a sense of, of what's really going on and the kind of evil that you are part of subverting this great progress of humanity towards a voluntary society. And, and I just, I hope that, that you do that. I, I hope that you have that, that, I hope you have the courage to face the truth. I hope you have the integrity to acknowledge it when you see it. Now, one of the things that was pointed out in all this by uh, our good friend Ernest Hancock, Ernie Hancock, Freedoms Phoenix, that's freedoms with an S, freedomsphoenix.com. And you can hear him on a show five days a week at uh, Declare Your Independence with Ernie Hancock through that website, freedomsphoenix.com. Yeah, Ernie, shameless plug for you for all the plugs you've given me. Thank you so much. But Ernie has been a longtime activist within the party. And one of the things that he brought to our attention is that the LNC has added a late business meeting on Tuesday. Now, this is typically what they do to manipulate the process to try to screw over people who will challenge their power. So I want you to know, if you're planning on being a delegate to the 2018 Libertarian National Convention in New Orleans, and by the way, we're going to have a lot of fun. And if you're planning on being there, uh, but you're concerned about your financial uh, constraints with that, we want to make it as inexpensive as possible. And this is the opposite of what the party has been doing, trying to make it an elitist thing and keep people out. No, we want to arrange for ride sharing. So maybe all you have to do is pitch in for gas. We're going to be renting a bunch of Airbnb houses around the convention, making it as inexpensive as possible. If you really need it, we'll have a cow or a piece of floor for you to sleep on for free near the convention and be providing shuttle service for people who want to come and be a part of this. And I, I just want to thank Ernie for pointing this out because what they normally do is wear you down and, and they'll try to count on people leaving early, leaving before the end of the business sessions as part of the national convention. So it's really important. Do not fly out until Wednesday. And if you're a candidate for the LNC, and I know that's only you know a couple dozen people, don't be ready to leave until Thursday or Friday because they might keep you there for LNC business. And it depends. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem because we, we will be replacing the national chair. We will be replacing Nick Sarwark at the 2018 convention. This kind of pedophilia, sympathy, and, and corruption at the national party will not stand if I have anything to say about it. So thank you to everybody who's made this possible. As Ron Paula said, uh, he gets told a lot that America really needs a third party. And he always says, no. America needs a second party because the Republicans and Democrats are essentially part of the same party with the same agenda, with the same corrupt sponsors, doing the same corrupt crap to keep out third parties like the Libertarians who pose a real threat to the establishment. So thank you for being a part of that threat. Thank you for standing up for peace, freedom, love, and justice. Mwah. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.